Let us talk about some of the roles and responsibilities of SysOps administrator. Now I do have to mention that these are not the exclusive list of responsibilities obviously depending on the job role that you're targeting and depending on the project that you're working on your responsibilities might slightly differ. But typically if you were to take a look at the day in the life of a SysOps administrator then the following are the set of responsibilities you can expect. The first of which is managing AWS resources. What that means is you're responsible for creation of the resources for the teams, manage them, optimize them for better performance or make them more cost effective. And most importantly, you're responsible for making all the resources available for other teams so they can stay focused on their work. For example, if you talk about developers, let's say, then their primary function is to develop the application and not worry about the resource allocation. So your job is to make their job easy by doing your job well, if that makes sense. Next comes the monitoring and this is where you're going to use some services like CloudWatch to be able to monitor the performance, resource utilization like RAM, CPU, function cost, etc. And most importantly, you're going to take a look at list of errors, warnings, alerts that might have come over the night. In fact, this is the very first thing that you might do once after you reach your office, probably after checking your emails, which is to take a look at all the errors, address them one by one. So you are the one who is responsible for addressing all those issues. Next comes security and compliance. This is where you're going to manage the access control. You're going to do security scans to look for any vulnerabilities or monitoring for any kind of threats and also ensuring uh, the compliance with security policies of the organization, all such sort of things basically. Next comes configuring AWS services. I don't think I have to describe it. It's pretty self-explanatory. And by the way, the image on the right hand side is actually depicting the work of a system administrator who tend to work on on-premise infrastructure their job might involve going to the physical lab and doing their activities whereas the SOPS administrator would pretty much work in front of their laptop and access all the AWS services over the internet. Next comes troubleshooting issues. I don't think I have to describe this. This is once again is pretty self-explanatory. So you're going to look after all the issues or the vulnerabilities or somebody else might have assigned an issue that they have faced and you are the one who would have to take care of addressing them. Next comes the automating the deployment. What that means is you're going to write some scripts. We call it template in AWS world and you're going to use some services like Terraform or AWS cloud formation to be able to sort of execute those templates and create resources. If you have heard of the infamous term infrastructure as code. This is what it means. You're going to write a code typically in the form of a JSON format and then you can create resources. The advantage of it is obviously it is more effective, less error prone, more efficient. For example, if you were to create 100 EC2 instances, it's a nightmare to do it manually. You would rather want to write a template that does the exact same job more effectively and you can also reuse those scripts so you can repetitively run those scripts to be able to create the infrastructure. Next comes backup and disaster recovery. Once again, it's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to use some of the AWS services to take up the backup of all the existing resources or servers, whatever the data and making sure that they're fault tolerant. Coming to certifications, the most relevant certification for you as a SysOps Administrator would be SysOps Administrator Associate Certification Exam. Next to it comes Solution Architect Associate Exam Certification. You can actually go with either one of these. Both are accepted to be honest. And uh, in fact, some of their responsibilities are actually common. However, there is a clear line between these two job designations. If you talk about solution architect, they're more focused on designing the architecture and implementing it and providing some support to some level at a very high level. Whereas SysOps administrator would come into picture after everything is implemented in order to maintain the system. 
So there's a clear line between these two job roles. At the same time, there are certain shared responsibilities. In the job market, you can go with either of the certifications, but if it makes more sense for you to go with SysOps Administrator Associate exam, that works as well. So if you're sure that you're going to aim for SysOps Administrator job role, obviously you can go with uh, the Administrator certification. Otherwise, if you're not sure, if you want to open up yourself for multiple possibilities, you can go with Solution Architect Associate as well. But a lot of folks actually do both these certifications. That obviously works well. You can also aim some of the specific certifications like security or advanced networking specialties. This is Ops Administrator that I know of. They have done their certification on advanced networking as well because their job role often demands uh, network related tasks like routing architecture, VPN, etc. But it's up to you whether you, you want to go with this or not. If your job demands it and if your company is sponsoring, then why not do that as well? And be warned that advanced networking specialty certification is not an easy one to crack. If you're aiming to become a SysOps administrator, you can also aim for these job roles. Uh, although the job designation or the job title is different, they pretty much do the same job. So you can call yourself as AWS System Administrator, SysOps Administrator, or Systems Analyst, or Cloud Administrator, AWS Cloud Engineer, or AWS Network Administrator. They all mean the same. You can aim for all these job roles. Coming to roadmap of becoming a SysOps Administrator is pretty much similar to the roadmap of the Solution Architect that we had discussed earlier. In case if you haven't watched that video, I would recommend you to watch that video so that you'll have a sense of the roadmap that you need to go through depending on your background. If you're coming from non-technical background or if you're a fresher, then your roadmap is not so easy. Otherwise, if you're coming from technical background or if you already have some experience in using AWS services, then your roadmap is relatively easier. Next, let's take a look at a typical job description of SysOps Administrator. So instead of me going through all this, just pause the video and take a look at them. I'm going to wait for 10 seconds before I move on to the next slide. Okay. Take a look at this as well. I hope it makes sense. Do like and subscribe. It hardly takes a couple of seconds for you to do that. And if possible, share this video as well. This might help someone. Also recommend me a topic for my next video in the comments below. I'll see you soon. Thank you.